Hello, 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 and good evening. This is our evening edition of Painting in Your PJs Live. I am not in my PJs, but a girlfriend asked me this morning with my cute little soft hoodie if I was wearing my PJs when I met with her because I want all of my clothes to feel like pajamas. Who doesn't? So welcome to the evening edition of Painting in Your PJs Live with Manette. I am Dr. Manette Riordan, and tonight I wanted to share one of my favorite passions with you. Over the last few days, we've done a variety of different things here on Painting in Your PJs. We've made prayer flags and a vision board in December. I made a really fun circle journal. But one of the things that I do personally almost every evening when I'm relaxing with my husband, sitting in front of the TV, or when I'm feeling anxious and I need, hi Leslie, or when I need a little time to just relax and calm my mind and maybe even find the answer to a problem that I'm struggling with, I turn to coloring one of our what we call sacred circle designs. I love adding color, but I especially love adding Zentangle patterns. So this is just a few of the ones that I have done over the last year. You can see there's a huge variety of ones that are colored and ones that are tangled. These are all part of, good evening Yvonne, a part of our Sacred Circles membership, which is a monthly membership based on, this was one of my favorites, based on coloring and mindful affirmations as well as Zentangle practices. And my son Connor designs all of these gorgeous Sacred Circles really love this affirmation. Calmness washes over me with every deep breath I take. And what I'm really loving about this practice is the ability it has to instantly calm me down within just a few minutes. And in my email today, I sent out a bunch of prompts for the month of January and also, um, this looks like a whole page of patterns here, as well as a couple of designs. Oh, that was a project that I taught in person last year that was super cute. But I wanted you to see some of these gorgeous sacred circle patterns. And I realized I did not put the link to the design in the YouTube video, but I will do that when... I am done, but this gives you an idea of the wide variety of patterns. We gather live three times each month, sometimes for Zentangle, sometimes for techniques and how to use supplies for coloring our sacred circles, and then sometimes for simply getting together and coloring in community. It's one of my favorite, favorite things that I get to do three times a month. And it's my birthday month, so we have a special going on this month where you can buy a year's membership for only $99. And the link to that is in the description of this video. But when my dear friend Leslie reached out to me this morning and said, hey, are you going to go live on YouTube this evening? because that is my normal regular schedule. January 13th is my birthday, Barbara. Hi, welcome. And I started to think about what could I do that would serve me? I've been in creative mode pretty intensively for the last four or five days on my own projects, the vision board and the prayer flags here. And I'm trying to shift gears into promoting and selling and launching and all the things I have to do to, to grow my business and, and sort of capture some of that New Year's energy. And of course, when Leslie said, hey, are you going to go live? And I thought, well, how do I want to spend my time? What would serve me? And what would serve others as well? I realized that what would serve me the most is some quiet time spent tangling one of these sacred circle designs. And I'm putting a link right into the live chat 
over on YouTube with a link to the Sacred Circles membership in this special offer for $99. But I also thought, do I want to just color with people? And the thing that I love almost more than anything is the practice of Zen Tangle. And to give you a little background into my story, I became a certified Zen Tangle teacher way back in 2014. Hard to believe this uh, summer will be my 10th anniversary. But I started tangling. I did my very first Zen Tangle tile in 2010. I have my first one I did actually with a teacher in 2011. I still have and as someone who's super creative and likes all of the creative practices, <laughs> Zen Tingle stuck. I have tried and discarded so many different types of creative expression and art making and craft projects and this and that and buying all the supplies. But the thing that stuck now for almost 15 years is the practice of Zen Tangle. It nurtures my spirit. And at the time, Zen Tangle and Soul Collage, which is another one of my creative certifications, were the things that brought me back to my own inner artist and really helped me heal my relationship with art. And a lot of other certified Zen Tangle teachers will share that same story with you. So tonight I want to gift you with an introduction to the Zentangle method, introduce you to some really simple patterns. And if you're new to Zentangle, please let me know that in the chat. If you don't have a copy of these, uh, be patient. I will get these loaded. That's awesome, Yvonne. All of us Capricorns, all of us super stubborn Capricorns. I'm sure she's been a, a tricky one, um, but we're smart too and tenacious. And uh, what I love about the mindfulness of this practice, it allows my hands to be busy while my mind is free to rest, to see new connections. And my son Connor and I, so Connor designs these gorgeous patterns and we come up with these affirmations. And I find that when I tangle and as I tangle or color and reflect on the affirmation that I can feel my heart slow down. I can feel my breathing slow down. I can feel that, you know, tight shoulders start to really relax. And I hope you'll enjoy this very simple introduction to Zen Tangle. So I'm going to work on this design on my page here. If you don't have this design and you're not on my uh, newsletter list and haven't downloaded the handout, then I'm going to encourage you to just grab a piece of paper and a fine tip black marker and you can practice drawing these patterns in your journal. It doesn't have to be in one of these designs. So why sacred circles? So sacred circles, I have always loved the symbol of the circle. I've been coloring and drawing and tangling mandalas for close to 20 years now. And traditionally, what I love about the concept of a sacred circle is it represents the whole as well as all the individual parts. And when we marry that wholeness, that integrity with these gorgeous Zen tangle patterns, we create something that's really beautiful in the final rendition, even though each of these spaces is going to be made up of a, a unique pattern, right? A unique pattern. So I want to dive right in. So the first step of the Zen Tangle method is just to pause and give gratitude and appreciation for the place that we're in right now, for this beautiful design from my son Connor, for these nice supplies, and for the time that I've gifted myself to be here drawing. So Zen Tangle is simply a mindful way of drawing repetitive patterns that anyone can draw. And if you can write the letters I, C, O, and S, you can pretty much create any Zen Tangle pattern. So what we're doing tonight is not a traditional Zen Tangle tile. It would be considered perhaps a Zendala or Zen Tangle inspired art, which is my favorite way to use Zen Tangle. I 
really tend to um, use this in all of my art, even in my giant paintings. In the corner behind me over here is a giant elephant that's covered in tangle patterns. So I want to start right here in the, the center of the circle and we're going to maybe work on these shadows a little bit with a circular fragment right in the center and I'm going to work with the nature of the shape itself and I'm going to put three little dots inside of that circle and then I'm simply going to connect those dots. So remember how we said if you can draw these shapes, so this is that straight line of the eye. And so I'm just going to create a very simple triangle in the center of my design. And then inside of that triangle, I'm going to create what's called an aura in Zentangle vernacular. And I'm going to mimic that triangle and draw a smaller triangle inside of that one. I'm going to go ahead and take my time and color that triangle in. And the tools for Zen Zen Tangle. Thanks, Leslie. Is that better? That's about as zoomed in as I can get. The tools for Zen Tangle are very simply. It's a fine tip black permanent marker. My personal favorite, it's not everyone's favorite, but mine and the one that Zentangle recommends is a Micron. This is a Micron 01, which has a very fine tip. We need a pencil, no eraser needed because there's no mistakes in Zentangle. And then a little smudge stick or tortillon is useful, but not necessary at this moment. Now I'm going to come around the edges and I'm going to go ahead and outline the edges of my circle. And they're going to start to take on a, a character of their own. Notice how perfectly imperfect this circle is. In fact, in Zentangle we call them orbs because orbs are imperfect. And then I'm going to aura that semicircle right there with another one on the inside. And an aura simply means that I'm going to create a parallel line that mimics the last line that I, that I put down. Another really important principle of Zentangle is to turn your page so that you're not twisting your hand to draw, but you're moving your page to make it easy for your hand to draw. So in this space, I'm going to create a couple of those auras. So again, I'm just sort of mimicking those half circles to create a really little simple fragment shape here in the very center of this design. And I picked this design because it's almost going to end up being a little Zentangle sampler with each of these different patterns. And again, any of these patterns can simply be drawn in a journal or on a blank sheet of paper. Don't feel like you need to recreate this entire design. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to work in my big circles and teach you some of my favorite Zentangle patterns. And we're going to start with one that's called Hollabaugh. All of the Zentangle patterns have names. Many of them have really fun stories. The founders of Zentangle, Rick Roberts and Maria Thomas, this is their daughter's surname, Hollabaugh, Molly Hollabaugh. And so this one is named after her. And this one always reminds me of the game of pick up sticks that we used to play when we were kids. Do you remember the buckets of the long thin sticks or if you think about in the woods seeing a bunch of fallen sticks. So we're going to practice the principle of drawing behind. So I started with two simple parallel lines. This is my first stick and then I'm going to turn my page here a little bit and I'm going to draw another stick as if I'm drawing behind the first one. So I'm going to stop at the edge and then start again on the opposite edge. And then I'm going to aura this line to create my second stick.
starting and stopping right at the edge of that line. And I'm going to fill this circle in that same way, practicing this principle of drawing behind to create a look of layered lines and patterns. And the slower that you go and the more that you take your time, the more your lines will be even, the easier it is to pay, pay attention to what in Zentangle is called takeoff and landing. So I'm literally taking off from the edge of the circle and I'm landing at the edge of that line. Then I'm picking up my pen and I'm continuing behind. And when I go slow, I can stop. Now this is inexpensive cardstock that I am drawing on. And so I'm noticing that my pen is spreading a little bit that, and I normally would do this on some Bristol vellum or some watercolor paper. Pinterest is one of my current favorite resources for Zentangle patterns. Tanglepatterns.com is another resource for discovering new patterns. And you'll notice that uh, on these videos, those of you that know me know that I chatter a lot while I'm drawing, but as I'm tangling, my voice slows down, my movements slow down. And there is our first pattern, Holaba. So we're going to draw all the patterns and then we'll go back at the end and add some shading to make these more dynamic and alive. So the next one that I want to do is Crescent Moon. Again, these are all very classic sort of beginner level patterns. And saying that, there's still some of my favorites that I use over and over again. So Crescent Moon, you're going to draw our little C shape. So it's a little half moon or ladybug shape. And I'm going to draw a set of these around the inside of my circle here. I'm not drawing them too tiny. If you draw them too tiny, you'll be here all day long. And it just creates a different look depending on the size of these little half circles that you draw. And then you're going to take your time and you're going to color in all of these little sweet crescent moons. Sometimes I will use a bigger nib on a micron like an O5 or even a, a PN in order to fill in these bigger spaces. But there's something to be said about using this O1, this very fine tip. And really taking your time and slowing down to ink in all of these spaces. There's no rush here. We have plenty of time. So once we have all of these spaces colored in, we're going to start to build a series of auras around our crescent moon shapes. Again, just really taking our time. Remember to breathe. Remember to stretch your hand out if you find you're gripping your pen too tight. 
remembering to turn your page so that you're moving the page, not contorting your hand. And I went all the way around once, and I'm going to go all the way around one more time. And one of the things that I think I love so much about Zentangle is the versatility of it and the mindfulness of it. But anything that looks like a mistake or you don't love or it doesn't quite fit, that by the time that you're done, everything will disappear and become all mismatched together into this beautiful cohesive whole that so aligns with the symbolism of the sacred circle. So I don't have room in between to continue those auras. So I'm going to create a new shape in the center here, still using that same principle of I'm just going to follow these lines all the way around and create a new shape. And I'm just going to keep going until there's not room in there anymore to add any more lines. And I love, and I'm going to go ahead and blacken this one in in the center. I love using my son Connor's designs as Zentangle strings. And sometimes they're great for Zentangle. Sometimes they're way too complicated uh, and are great for coloring. But I love being able to tangle them and then add shading or to tangle them and then to add color. So in these little triangle spaces in between here, I'm going to go ahead and just trace over the edge of those triangles. And then we're going to use that same principle. And I'm just going to put a little a couple small triangles in there just to give those a little texture. For those of you that are more advanced tanglers, I love putting paradox in here. Hey, Tori, welcome, welcome. We're doing really basic intro stuff. So if you know Paradox, we start in one corner, we go up a little bit from the other corner, and we almost as if we just continue to draw those triangles inside. That's a, a little trickier pattern, but I love the, the look of, of it, so I might alternate some of those triangles. So we started with our circular fragment in the center. We went to Halaba. Then we went to Crescent Moon. And next I'm going to go to one that's called Bales, which is another all-time favorite. It's a grid pattern, but it has a botanical feel that makes me happy. So I'm going to draw a grid inside of my circle, and I'm going to make that grid pretty big. So I'm going to do three horizontal lines. Then I'm going to turn my circle and I'm going to do three lines going the opposite direction as if I'm creating a checkerboard. And then we're going to use our little C shape again to create little seed pods around each of these lines. And I'm going to start here in the center, and I'm left-handed, so I'm starting on the left. If you're right-handed, you probably want to start on the right because it will feel more natural. And I'm going to come in, and I'm just going to add that little C shape down the lines. And where I come to the edge of the circle, I'm going to let that seed pod just imagine that it's going behind. So just like the principle, of what we did over here, right? Of what we did over here, we're practicing drawing behind. Hi, Lija. So the second one was Crescent Moon. 
and the current one that I'm drawing is bales. These are all official Zentangle patterns from Zentangle HQ. And again, they're introductory patterns. And then I'm going to mimic or mirror that little seed pod on the opposite side of my line. So ultimately, I end up with this pretty little seed pod looking shape. And I'm going to do that on all of the vertical lines. And then I'll turn my circle and also do it on the horizontal lines. And you can go all the way down one side and then the other side, or you can alternate. You'll find your rhythm, right? You'll find your rhythm. And then I'm going to turn this because it's easier to draw these top to bottom than off to the side. So we're going to just from that little corner space there, you can see how they're all starting to meet in the centers and sort of create this lovely, lovely pattern. The very first class I took with a certified Zentangle teacher was back in 2011. And she was a nurse and she didn't teach a lot, but she came and gave a private lesson to myself and one of my girlfriends in my office I had at the time. This was back when I owned my publishing company. And she added this little touch to bales that I've never forgotten and that I really love. So in the top left, we're in one corner of these little spaces. We're going to add some little dots, just like this little dot on our eye here, that just makes it even a little more elegant and festive. So right here in this little corner, I'm just going to make three little dots. And I'm going to do that in the top left of each one of these where I can. And I think that it just adds, again, maybe that little bit of that floral or botanical inspiration. And it just makes me happy to add those little dots. And I'm not adding them over here because we can't see the top left of these because we've drawn behind. So that is bales. Next, we're going to do a variation on a classic pattern called Knightsbridge, which is a checkerboard pattern. So we're going to continue with our grid pattern here. And I might make this grid just a little bit smaller than the one I did for bales, just to kind of vary the size and the interest, visual interest. And normally when you do Knightsbridge, it is like a checkerboard and you would color in every other square solid black. But this is a variation. It's similar to a variation by Suzanne Mitchell called Flying Geese. But I like to take that again, that half moon shape that we've used over and over again, that curved C shape. And I'm going to divide each of these in half with that curved C shape. Again, on some of these, imagining that they're going off underneath the edges of my circle. I don't tend to love patterns where I have to color in a lot. So Knightsbridge is one for me that gets a little bit tedious, which is probably why I started using this variation. I also like, it's a high contrast pattern with a lot of black and a lot of white. 
So in the bottom left side, for me, if you're right-handed and your curves went the other way, it would be the bottom right. But in the bottom half of each of those little square spaces, we're going to color in that triangular space. It's like a curved triangle. And again, I like the way that it looks. You can make them a little bit bigger as you go. I noticed that one got a little bit skinny. And again, I'm just taking my time to blacken in all these spaces. Remembering to breathe, to slow down. I notice when I'm coloring things in that I start to grip my pen and so it can be good to remember to pause, stretch out those fingers, relax the pen. Don't hold it with a death grip. Hold it lightly. You actually draw better, straighter lines when you hold your tools a little more lightly. And if you've just popped in to join us, welcome. We're talking about Zen Tangle and adding tangle patterns to the Sacred Circle designs from our Sacred Circle membership, which is on sale right now for $99 a year. That's a $67 savings. And that's three live classes a month offered at different times, but always on Thursdays this year. And you get new designs and new classes every single month. And what neuroscience and a field called neuroaesthetics, what art therapy and psychology all teach us is that working in a sacred circle design is more calming for your mind than any kind of coloring or art making because our brain loves the circle shape. It's why so many things in nature and in design from original Hindu mandalas to rose windows in cathedrals to sand paintings from naked Native Americans, um, the sun, the moon, the earth are all round. There's a wholeness to it that our brains love. And when we have these simple patterns already drawn that we're just adding texture or color or patterns to, it allows our brain to relax. And there's a great study by the American Art Th Therapy Association. They did a study of several thousand students and showed how coloring a mandala reduced stress like five times better than simply coloring a page. It takes away all the fear of the blank page because we already have these designs ready to go, waiting to be filled out. And Diego thinks it's dinner time and you're gonna come say hello, come on up. Yes, I hear you. So he's down here bugging me because he's being ignored and nobody's feeding him and it's not his dinner time. He started bugging me for dinner at 4.30, but dinner's not until 6 o'clock, is it? Yes, he took a boy. And they can tell, so the weather has been unseasonably and wonderfully warm and it is about to start actually really being like January and get cold. And I think the cats realize it because they're both eating extra. So this is a variation of Knightsbridge. The next pattern we're going to do is a really fun one called Prontemps. 
which means spring in French. So I, I'm, I'm sure there's a story about why they named this pattern after spring. But we're going to draw a series of spirals. I love drawing spirals. I can fill pages full of spirals. And I've decided that the spiral is my sacred symbol for 2024. I love that feeling of thinking about how my need to spend time spiraling in and when do I need to go and spiral out. So in Zentangle, we're going to start from the inside. We're going to circle one, two, about three times, and then we're actually going to close the spiral. And we're going to smush them up here together. That one I went from the outside in. It doesn't really matter if you go inside out or outside in. So I think find what feels best to you. I'm curious, do you naturally tend to draw your spirals inside out or outside in? It's a fun question to think about. And then in these in-between spaces, we'll go back and use our principle of drawing behind, imagining that that spiral is tucked behind so we can only see part of that spiral. And you can vary the size of your spirals. Maybe some of them will be a little bit bigger. Some of them will be a little bit smaller. Again, we're not striving for perfection. If you make them too tiny, again, you might be here for days. Hey, Tori, are you in Denver yet? I know you said, I think you said you were coming to Denver this week to see your daughter. Is that what I remember? Get ready, because uh, like it was in the 40s today, the 50s yesterday, and tomorrow we may not get out of the 20s. So the, the weather is changing rapidly. It was in the 20s when Brad and I went for our walk this morning, super, super chilly. In Zentangle, there are different types of patterns. There's grid patterns and organic patterns and border patterns. I definitely really love the more organic patterns. I tend to turn to those over and over again. I often struggle with drawing the grid patterns. You draw inside out in a clockwise fashion. You'll be in Denver tomorrow. Well, bundle up, my friend. So um, weather should be fine for travel, but it's definitely, definitely going to be chilly. And then we want to add a little bit of contrast to all of our patterns. And we're going to do that with shading in a few minutes, but we can also do it with line weight and a little extra ink. So in these little triangular spaces between the spirals, I can come in and just blacken those little interstices. I love that word. It's a fun word to say. Those little spaces between our spirals or where we've got some extra space around the edges. And notice the impact that adding that little bit of line weight adds. I might stick a little row of orbs there in that little space. One of the things I think I love about, well, one of the like, 50 million things that I haven't already mentioned is that it's not about looking so much at where light is coming from or how to shade something. It really is about creating contrast and visual interest. It's about letting the pen do a lot of the work and the pencil do a lot of the work for us. And again, it's about no mistakes so that by the time that we've completed this design, 
we won't notice if there's anything that felt like a mistake. And again, as I'm tangling, I'm thinking about this affirmation of I am grounded. It's the beginning of the year. There's a lot to do. I could feel anxious and overwhelmed. But after a half hour or so of tingling, I feel very calm. I feel grounded. I feel back in my body and better able to see what's next in front of me on my list. Let's see. Where do I want to go next? I think with this one, we're going to go to kind of a fun abstract grid pattern called floors. So this time, I'm going to draw a little bit of a wonky grid. Something that looks like that. And then each place where two lines cross each other, I'm going to add a little square at that cross and blacken that in. And it ends up creating something that looks like a net. And you can draw a very squared off version of floors. But I already have this very square here and this very squared here. So doing a little bit of a funky pattern felt a little more fun to just add a little bit of different visual interest. And I was, of course, looking for patterns that would fit inside these little circles without getting too complicated to fit them in. And I'm going to skip a couple of them that feel too tiny and close together. But this I love. It feels like a very playful pattern to me. And so this one was Floors, F-L-O-R-Z. And now I want to come in and just use some mark making, not necessarily Zentangle patterns, to kind of finish it off and just fill in a few more of the spaces. First, I'm going to finish adding those lines to my triangles here. And I'm going to show you Paradox. I'll draw it big on the back of the page. It's a fun pattern to draw. Works Paradox. Works great in a triangle space, but can be morphed into other spaces. So you're going to start from a corner of your triangle. And I'm going to start that aura line, but that aura line is going to veer away. So I create this other funny long triangle. And then I'm going to start right here at the edge and I'm going to do that again. And I'm going to continue every time you turn your page. You're always going to start from that corner where you left off and then continue on leaving this little bit of space. And you're going to continue doing that until you run out of space. And when you look at this pattern, it's a little brain twisty. But once you learn to draw it, it's so much fun to draw. Like it makes my hand happy. So paradox is what I was putting inside some of these little tiny triangles up here. And then some of them I simply did inner auras on the triangles. Most of Connor's designs are symmetrical, like a traditional mandala design. But every once in a while, I'll start doing some kind of alternating pattern and then realize like there's seven of them instead of six of them. 
but what I love about Zentangle is it doesn't matter because by the time we've created the whole So this one feels like um, a little spinny wheel or something like that fun little Zentangle sampler. So around this little circle fragment here in the center, this is like a, a triple E, which is a, a fun triangle pattern. I, this triangle is floating too much for me, so I want to anchor this triangle a little bit. So I'm just going to go from the top of my outer triangle to the top of my inner triangle and then from those outer edges and it just feels anchored a little bit differently and makes me happy. I'm also feeling like it's a little bit boring so here's where I tend to like get carried away and have a lot of fun with Zentangle is by looking for places where can I add lines and dots and my love of mixed media art making intersects with my passion for Zentangle. And then around the outside of this we're going to do kind of a leafy pattern or floral actually no I'm going to do this one. There's different names for this one but basically we're going to draw a tall arch like a tall crescent moon and I'm going to do all the pointy shapes first and my goal is to make them more or less the the same shape sometimes that ends up being more less than more And then I'm going to put some inner auras inside of these. They kind of look like arches to me. And then I'm going to blacken in the center little arch there. Again, I'm adding that black line weight or that colored in shape because of the lovely contrast that it creates. I can show it at the end one more time, Yvonne. It definitely takes a little bit of practice, but uh, give me a couple of minutes and I will show the I will show that one again. But I definitely uh, encourage you to look up the, the step outs as well. And then I'm going to draw one more of those arches here in the center, in between. And I did all the tall ones first to make sure that they just fit the space. Help me to create some symmetry with the drawing, where if I just tried to go around the circle, my spacing might have gotten off a little bit. And then I'm looking here at this funny little space around and I think I'm going to just put some orbs in here. And so orbs are simply hand drawn circles. They can be drawn in a row or in a bunch. And the slower you go the more round your orbs will be. And again, I'm going to start with these higher curved corners here. And I'm going to have those orbs fit right inside of those little curves and let the curves of the string of our sacred circle design guide. The drawing there. And then I'm going to just fill in the space in between. So for me about three orbs fit that space 
nicely. Continuing to turn my page as I go. So I'm super excited for January's painting in your PJs. So I'm going to squeeze one little one. So I created a set of 30, no, I think I maybe did 25 because like 31 felt like too much and it's already the 3rd of January. Art journal prompts that are specifically intended to help us think about what we want for this year and to keep our all the work that we've been doing top of mind. So often we put a lot of time and energy into end of year reflection, into setting goals or thinking about dreams and plans and you know by the second week of January we've forgotten about all of it. So I have a brand new set of prompts. If you're on my email list, you got that set of prompts today in your email and I will have them ready to share tomorrow morning here on my YouTube channel as well, along with the, it includes the link to this design. And so we're going to spend the month of January, especially in the mornings, on Tuesdays and Thursday mornings, working in our art journals with these prompts that I'm calling, I can't remember what I called them, Renew, Reflect, Refresh. But really focusing on rather than all the external things that we need to change, continuing with this theme that we've been on for a few weeks now of who am I and how do I want to feel going forward? Awesome, Leslie, thank you. All right, so I'm loving the center that feels really fun and playful. So I'm noticing this, you know, outer line here and deciding if I want to ink that line or if I want to just use shading to make those circles pop out, I'm not sure. But around the outside, I'm going to add some stripes around the outside. And I'm not going to worry about making them too even. I kind of like them a little jaggy looking as if the line light is shining on them. And I just want to make this circle feel a little bit more complete. So just coloring some simple stripes around the edge of our pattern. So normally on a sacred circle like this, I wouldn't use this many different patterns, but I kind of like this one where instead of symmetry, we have a lot of different patterns. And I said before, I kind of like a little mini Zentangle, Zentangle sampler of patterns. I'm also thinking about January. I've been wanting to create a, a series of paper dolls. I was inspired by the artist Megan Quinlan and her different fun paper doll stamps and stencils. And I got some cute new paper doll die cuts. So I need, know at least a, a few of the days I want to play with creating some little 
characters, it'll all become clear to me as I get started. So I'm never really started, I'm never really 100% clear until I actually sit down and start. But I am very excited about the prompts. They are all therapeutic art prompts designed to help with self-reflection. I'm glad, Tori, you're liking all the, the different patterns. It's uh, definitely one of those things when you're learning Zentangle that you want to be able to have a nice library of patterns and it can be challenging to start to build up that library. So now that I've added all the tangle patterns, I'm going to come in with just a plain old number two pencil and start to add some shading. And again, what I want to create is drama and contrast. I'm not worrying about light source or making everything shaded the same. But I do want to maybe increase, you know, some of the roundness and some of that feeling of things being drawn behind. It says this is a 2B, but this is a very dark pencil, which is good. It'll be show better on the camera. I normally don't like that dark of a graphite. So when you start shading Zentangle, if you're new to Zentangle, go light with a little bit of graphite because it's easy to add graphite. It's very difficult to remove graphite from a piece that you've shaded. So I shaded around the outside of the circle here. I'm also going to add a little bit of shading, almost like a little Nike swoosh there around the bottom edge of all of these orbs that will help create some roundness in my orbs so that they start to take on some fun dimension and not look just flat circles on the page, but actually like balls. And then I might actually add a little bit of shading just between my petals here so we can make those little petal shapes stand out. And we don't need to fill everything in. It's all right when, when I'm done with the shading, Yvonne, I'll just take a minute to uh, show the instructions one more time. It won't take long. And then I'm going to take this tortillon or this smudge stick. And if you don't have one of these, you can use your finger. You can use a Q-tip. It's a graphite blender. And I'm going to soften that graphite. And this one has been well loved and the tip isn't very sharp. But I, so I'm not completely filling things in. Oops, with the graphite, right? But I'm just softening those hard lines. And I want to start in the center and work my way out so I don't drag my hand through all of that graphite. So I'm going to start down here with the, the bales. Get that lead in the right place and I'm going to shade underneath one side of each of my little seed pods and then down a corner. So I'm going in that same corner where I put the little three dots. So I'm doing underneath the bottom and down the left side. And then I'm also going to do around the inside of the whole circle. as well.
And then again, I'm just taking that little smudge stick and really softening up that graphite. And to me, this is what really makes a Zendala, in this case, or a Zentangle tile come alive is when we add the shading. So this one is a fun and really simple one to shade. I'm just going to shade right along the grid in both directions. And again, I'm going to shade in the inside edge of that circle to just help separate it from its background. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we'll just go in, follow those same lines, just soften all that graphite. And then I'm going to turn my page and I'm going to add just a tiny little bit of shading. My pencil has a funny tip on it. It's not landing where I want. I think I need to sharpen it to the triangle so we get just a little bit of shading in our triangle. So it's going to make the triangles look like they're sort of receding in to the designs. And then our prawn tomp here, I think I'm just going to shade around the outside of the circle. So it looks like we have this beautiful mound of little snail shells or spirals. So a lot around the edges, keeping that center very, very light. And the shading makes me so happy. Same thing with our floors here. Going around the inside of that circle. Keeping a very light touch on that graphite. And then we're just going to add maybe a little bit of shading inside some of our funky wonky little spaces here to give a little fun roundness to our net pattern here. And I'm getting a lot of graphite now on my smudge stick. So I'm actually getting a little more graphite than maybe I want. So you can just take that tortillon and rub it on a piece of scratch paper and clean off some of that graphite so you get a cleaner tip again because I want to be a little more controlled inside these tiny little spaces. Inside our Sacred Circles membership, we have one Zentangle class a month, one class that focuses on tools and techniques, and one that is a mindful coloring experience. I love the Zentangle classes. So on our Halaba here, I'm going to shade the spaces between my pickup sticks so we can make sure those sticks are popping out. Yvonne, glad you're loving it. And then I'm actually going to shade a little bit where some of these cross over each other as well to again amplify that illusion of layered sticks, right? To amplify that illusion of layered sticks. 
And no matter how many times I draw these beginner patterns, I never get tired. Sometimes I tend to get in a rut with my favorite tangles and I have to go try to break outside of my comfort zone and find new patterns. Because there's the ones that I love to draw, that my hands love to draw. We're almost finished. So with my crescent moon, I'm going to add a little shading, not right around the crescent, but in the center and a little all the way back around again, farther out. Again, just looking for places that we can create some depth, a little bit of magic. This one also has some fun places where I could come in with a white gel pen and add some white highlights. So the mindful fun that we can have with a piece like that, this, is really pretty endless. And I never feel like I have to, I'm going to sharpen my pencil here. I never feel like I have to finish one of these in one setting. So this has taken me about an hour to work on this little one. Sometimes I'll spend several days on even a small one like this. And then on our larger designs, which are about eight by eight inches, you know, it can, like this one is a great example. This was one of my favorite lessons from the Sacred Circles membership. This took hours, right, to do all of these little patterns. And it's hours of fun for me. So normally I get bored with things very quickly, but there's something about the repetitive nature of these line drawings that makes my heart really happy. So the last thing that I want to do, this funny little pencil lead, it must be very soft. I keep getting a really wonky shape on the tip. Is I'm going to shade inside the edge of the circle here. Turning my page as I go, which also helps me be mindful of not dragging my hand through all of that nice graphite that I put down. And then I'm also going to add a little graphite in these centers. To help bring this little outer shape here around the circles to stand out. And I could have done that with ink, but I like the drama of doing it with sheeting as well. And I'm going to use a lot of this graphite and just work my way around the circle. Not going for perfection. Again, I'm just going for visual interest. I know, right? That shading makes such a difference. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Yvonne. Adding the shading pulls the, the whole piece together. Centangle is very, very forgiving. Connor's designs are lovely all on their own. And then when we add color and pattern, it's like magic. And I love it because even people that think they can't draw are impressed with themselves with Zentangle. And I love teaching beginner classes in person, especially with large numbers of people and having everyone create a mosaic of their tiles at the end of the class. And then no one looks 
better or worse than the others. They all look so beautiful together. All right, and there we have, yes, I am a certified Zen Tangled teacher since way back in 2014. And I don't teach a lot of Zen Tangle, but I practice a lot of Zen Tangle. And maybe I'll just add a little more line weight under the edges of these triangles. This is where you just get to really play and decide. I think I have six or seven different creativity coaching certifications, of which Zentangle is one. And after and yeah, the shading is what makes the difference, Kim, right? Like without the, the shading, it just doesn't have the same impact or the same cohesiveness. And again, bringing them together inside of one of our sacred circle designs adds that extra element of these visually beautiful strings. And if you're on my email list and you got this page in the printouts, then what I'm going to encourage you to do on your own time is to use some of the same patterns to complete this lovely flower design on the other page. And I want to come back and I'm going to draw Yvonne just for you the paradox one more time. And when you're practicing paradox, I think one of the secrets is to start big because you can kind of see what you're doing rather than trying to morph it into a space. So if this is my string, we're always going to start in a corner of our triangle space. It's not always a triangle. Triangles are just the easiest. And I'm going to start from the corner here. And then I'm going to end not at the corner, but a little bit down from the corner. So I'm going to go from that corner up here and then again I'm going to go from the corner and I'm drawing the dots just as guidelines, right? And then I'm going to go from the corner to a little bit away from the corner and then we're just going to every time turn our page, always starting from that corner but then shooting for a little bit beyond the corner. So going from the corner back up here. So we're creating every time another long skinny triangle. So from the corner, leaving a little space. And every time we just continue to make smaller and smaller triangles so they all become kind of skewed and it definitely helps if you turn the page because then that corner that you're drawing from is always in the same place. So if you're right-handed you would probably be doing this backwards but if I turn so I'm always coming from that corner down here, right? From the corner, drawing down. From the corner, drawing down. Just continuing all the way around to fill that space. And it definitely takes a little practice. And then when I get to the inside, I get lazy as that space gets smaller. So from the corner, leaving space. From the corner, leaving space and eventually you get that flow where it just becomes muscle memory but you want to slow down take your time one stroke at a time until you can't make any more triangles 
and this is really ends up creating this really lovely lovely shape yay glad it makes sense now so thank you so much everyone for joining me for this evening session of painting in your PJs live with Manette, where we were talking about Zen Tangle and Sacred Circles. And again, I encourage you to check out our Sacred Circles, that is not a Sacred Circle, our Sacred Circles membership with these gorgeous designs designed by my son Connor, colored and tangled by me. It's on sale right now for $99 for a year long membership three live classes a month um, about seven new designs every single month one week is coloring one week is techniques and tools and one week is zentangle i even love just plain old i think my daughter colored this one plain old uh Crayola markers. This is one of my favorite patterns. So I encourage you to come and join me if what you're looking for this year is creative community, connection, and a little more mindful creative play in your day. Hi Diana, welcome, welcome. Thank you everybody. So great to be with you. As always, I will be back bright and early tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Mountain Time in my pajamas, 7 a.m. Mountain Time, in my pajamas with a brand new set of art journal prompts. I will see you guys all soon. Have a beautiful rest of your evening. Bye-bye, everybody.